Paper art is one of my favorite things, and now that I can do it digitally and procreate, it's so much easier. You can create amazing 3D art in literally minutes. No paper cuts, no scissors, no glue, no mess. Today I'm going to walk you through, step by step, how to create your own 3D paper cut summer scene on your iPad. I'm even giving you free tools and resources to make it even quicker and easier. I want you to have fun and enjoy this process. Let's get started. Here's what our completed piece is going to look like. All right, let's jump into this and go ahead and create this paper cut. You're going to need a new canvas. I'm just using my screen size. You can use whichever size you would like. And the first thing we're going to do is create our waves. And you can decide how many layers of waves you want to have. Go ahead and choose whichever color you want to start with. And I'm using a monoline brush. I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit so I can see the edges. And then you can just freehand this, just make some squiggles here. That might be a little too big on the brush. A little more control here. You can play around with it till you find a brush size that you like. All right, and then you can just color drop to fill in the rest. And then we're gonna add a new layer, change this color, and continue the process. Drop that beneath, you can start to see this wave effect take shape. I'm going to lighten this a little bit. And do another set of waves here. I don't really like the way that ended up, so. Two finger tap to undo is my best friend. Okay, and I'm gonna do one more, even lighter set of waves. I might move that up a little bit. Color drop. Okay, so now I've got my waves here. I do wanna go ahead and add my beach into the background here. I generally don't use the background color that much because I want to have a little bit more control over it. So I always add another layer for the background, but you could actually just change this background color to be the beach if you want. So in order to get that beach color, I actually took this orange from the color palette and I just went up into this more neutral pale color here. So you can choose one that you like. You can see that's about where mine is. And I'm just gonna color drop onto that. I also like because you can color drop onto a layer where in, as if you just went into the background, you'd have to just manually select it. Yeah, I just find it easier, but you do you. Um, the next thing I'm going to add is that layer of white foam. If you double tap close to white, you'll get solid white, which is a nice little shortcut. And I have this little brush, stamp brush that I've made with a circle with an outline. You don't have to use something like this, but you absolutely could. Um, I just liked that it gave this kind of little effect of bubbles. So what I'm doing is just kind of tapping this. There are plenty of other brushes out there that could do something similar, or you could just draw this by hand. But I, I liked the look of these bubbles, so that's what I ended up using. And then as long as you've sealed both edges, you should be able to color drop the white behind there. And then I'm just gonna take a monoline brush and fill in right here. And I think I might move this down ever so slightly. And you can see I'm kind of moving it off of the edge of this page a little bit. You can finagle this a little bit and just make sure that it's still covering both edges. Okay, there we go. Now the next thing we need to do is add our graphics in here. If you think you can't draw or you can't draw as well as you would like, I do not want that to stop you from doing this project. I've put together a Dropbox folder that has inside of it the color palette for Procreate that we're going to be using 
as well as some PNG image files for all of these summer graphics for the sample project. These even have drop shadows built in to make it super easy for you to follow along. You can find the link for that in the description down below. Don't even have to give me your email address, that's totally free. So you can either use the ones that I've provided for you or you can of course draw your own. This color palette will come in really handy for that. I'm gonna go ahead and import them just to save time and also show you how that would work. So we're gonna come up here to the wrench icon. Um, I've got them saved in files. You could also save them in your photos. And in that case, you would insert a photo. But wherever you have put them, you're gonna go into that folder or in your photos. And then you're gonna grab them. You have to do it one at a time. And just start putting them wherever you want. Now this towel is gonna need to go up on, on an edge if you're using the one I made you because that's already cropped. <laughs> but I think everything else is not cropped. So we'll put that there. I'm just gonna go through the process of getting all these in here and then we will arrange them. Okay, now that we've got everything in here, we can decide how to place them within the layers that we have. Now, just because of the order that I imported them, I got my sandals on top of my beach towel, which is what I want. But some of these other ones probably want to be partially hidden by these waves. We can do that by coming to our layers panel and just grabbing the one that we want and coming to our transform tool and then we'll move, be able to move it around here. So that's that one. I think we want that one behind at least a couple of these. Let's see how that looks. So I think he just needs to be um, maybe on top of that white bubbles and behind everything else. So let's drag him down one more layer. Yep, I think that works. So he's in the waves but on top of the foam. And you can rotate it and do all the usual things with these. Perfect. All right, this other starfish might just be actually out on the beach. Maybe on top of the foam a little bit. This ring definitely needs to be in the waves. So I've already got the surfboard behind this darkest color. I think let's move the ring to a different set of waves. There we go. Use the transform tool to adjust how much of it is showing. And then we just have our beach ball. I think that'll be pretty far up as well. Probably not too, off, too far off of the shore. That's looking pretty good as far as layout. Okay, now is the fun part where we get to make everything look 3D. I just wanted to remind you that if you did download the sample graphics that I provided, you do not need to do this step for those layers. You only need to do this for things that you've drawn, like the waves or the bubbles, or if you did your own graphics, then you would wanna do this on those as well. And the way that we're gonna do that is by adding highlights and shadows to them. Let's go ahead and start with this darkest wave here. Come to your layers panel. We're gonna swipe left, duplicate. We're gonna do that twice, always duplicating the bottom layer. And because we have so many things here, it's gonna be really important for us to stay organized. So we're gonna multi-select by swiping right on the other two and choosing group. And I'm going to rename this bottom wave. So I'm clear on which one it is. And I'm gonna do the same thing for these other ones. And then we'll come right back. Okay, so now we've got all of those grouped. You can see how much easier it is just scrolling through the layers panel when they're organized like that. We need to make each of these bottom layers black. In order to do that, we're gonna turn alpha lock on. There's two ways to do that. Where you can either tap on the layer and choose alpha lock. You can see that checkerboard pattern show up. 
I like to use the two finger swipe to the right method. I think it's faster. So we're gonna do that for all five of these layers. Come up to our color palette here. You can, if it's already here, you can grab it. Otherwise just double tap anywhere close to black and you will get black. And then we're gonna go through and fill each of these and turn alpha lock off. All right, so those are gonna be our shadows for each of these layers. The middle ones are going to be our highlights. We do have to do these individually as well. We're gonna come up here to the magic wand, which is our adjustments menu, and choose hue, saturation, and brightness. We wanna take these somewhere in the range of 70, 75%, somewhere like that. So when you look at these, you should see a big contrast, a big difference between the top and the middle layer. We're gonna do that for all the rest of these. For the lighter colors, you don't have to go quite as much because they're already pretty bright. Now for white, the trick with this one is we're actually going to make it a very light gray because obviously it can't go any brighter. Now we are going to make the magic happen. We're gonna multi-select all of our shadows. Select your bottommost shadow and swipe right on all these other shadow layers. Okay. Select your transform tool up here. And we're going to move these up and to the right. You can just tap inside this corner and you start to see those shadows appearing. And because this is full screen, we're not actually going to see much change with the highlights. If we had other edges here for them to show up on, um, that would create an additional effect. So I'm actually not gonna worry about those too much. But as you can see on these pieces here, when we did move the highlights, since they had something to show up against, that's where you're gonna see that additional 3D effect. All right. Now we just need to blur those shadows to get that final 3D effect here. And you do have to do these individually. Come ahead, go ahead and select your bottom most shadow layer. This is for your bubbles. Come to the magic wand and Gaussian blur. And go ahead and slide that over to get as much blur as you would like. And then you can also adjust the opacity by going back into the layer, tapping on the N and using this slider here. If it's a little too harsh of a shadow. And then I like to collapse that layer so I know that I'm done with it. Come to the next shadow, magic wand, Gaussian blur. And now we're doing this shadow right here, you can see. And I'm going to reduce the opacity of that one as well and close the group. And we're just gonna continue this for the rest of the waves. And now we've got our full scene with our 3D effects. And you could just stop here. One thing that helps it look a little bit more realistic is adding an actual paper texture to your design. Now there's two ways to do this. You can add a paper texture that covers the whole piece, or you can actually go through and add paper textures to the individual pieces and groups. Here's where I'll pop in here to say, I think it's totally worth the extra time to put different paper textures on different layers or at least different versions of the same paper texture and rotate them or do different things because it just looks so much better. It looks a lot more realistic than if you just slap one paper texture over the whole thing. But if you don't want to do that or don't have the time to do that, I still think it's better to put one paper texture over all of it than to not do anything at all. So. Take your pick, see what, how much time you have and what you wanna do. I'm going to show you in this other one that I did what that looks like. You can see I have different paper textures for different waves, for different of these elements, and it really does give it a really nice look, but it is pretty time consuming. So it just depends how much time you have, what look you're going for, that kind of thing. In order to do these on the individual pieces, you're basically adding a layer, inserting a file, like we're going to do in a second, and then you're just using it as a clipping mask 
for that individual piece. So basically I've done that in every single one of these groups. So for this one, we're going to add a paper texture to the whole piece. Come up to the very top layer and add a new one. Come to your wrench icon, insert a file. And this linen paper texture is included if you downloaded the set of images. You're just gonna to wanna to make sure you stretch it so it covers your entire canvas. And then we just need to change the blend mode. Come over to the little end here. And usually overlay works pretty well. You can play around with that and see which one you like. So you can see it does give it a good paper texture. The shadows don't work quite as well when everything has the exact same texture. They don't look quite as realistic because the shadows are getting that texture as well. You can decide what look you like and what you're going for and how much time you want to spend on it. But those are the two options for adding that paper texture. I hope that was helpful for you. I love showing people how to combine creativity and technology on this channel. If you enjoyed it, I would love it if you give me a quick thumbs up down below. It really helps my small channel out and just tells YouTube that more people should watch this. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to learn more about digital paper cut and also some typography tips, I have a class available over on Skillshare. There's a link in the description for a free 30-day trial. You can take my class as well as thousands of others on a bunch of different topics.